In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the Poisson distribution. So, we're going to start off by defining the sort of mathematical formula behind the Poisson distribution. We're then going to talk about the circumstances under which it is appropriate to use a Poisson distribution. And we're also going to provide some example situations of where it is adequate to model the situation using a Poisson distribution. We're then going to talk about the probability mass function of a Poisson distribution. In particular, we're going to derive its mean and we're going to just state its variance, although it can be obtained in a very similar way to the mean. We're then going to talk about the circumstances under which the Poisson distribution can be used to approximate a binomial distribution, which is a very handy approximation for many circumstances. We're going to finish this introduction by just stating the conjugate prior distribution of a Poisson distribution. So if we start off by defining the Poisson distribution, the first thing to note about this particular distribution is that it is a discrete distribution with a likelihood which is given by the probability of y given a parameter lambda, which we're going to talk about in a minute, which is just equal to lambda to the power y times e to the power minus lambda, all divided through by y factorial. And just to be clear here, we're talking about the circumstance when y is 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So y measures a non-negative integer. Because y measures a non-negative integer, we can think about the circumstances when it might be appropriate to use a Poisson distribution to model a circumstance. So the sort of circumstances we're talking about here is generally we use the Poisson distribution to measure the count of something. And in particular, it measures the count of events which are sort of occur at a rate which is uniformly random in either time or space. And we'll give examples of what I mean by these two sort of circumstances and what do I actually mean by uniformly at random. So that's the first thing. So we're talking about the count of events which occur at a sort of uniform rate through time or through space. Also, the events must be independent. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the probability of another event occurring given that a first event has occurred is no different to the sort of unconditional probability of the second event occurring. So what are the examples we can think about for the Poisson distribution? So an example might be whereby y here measures the number of births per hour on a given day in a particular hospital. And we might imagine that these events occur sort of, or the event of individual giving birth occurs uniformly at random in a given sort of time throughout the day. So they're occurring uniformly at random throughout the day. So that seems to make sense. So they're uniformly at random through time. And we assume that the events are independent. And that is trivially true for the case of births because it's unlikely that an individual giving birth makes it more likely that another individual will give birth. So that's an example of events which occur uniformly through time. How about an example of events which occur uniformly through space? So let's imagine now that Y measures the number or count of disease cases for a particular disease within a given town. So we're imagining here that we're sort of looking at different towns and we're assuming that these towns have, for example, the same population, and hence the sort of rate or the sort of mean number of disease cases which occur, let's say, within a year within a particular town is the same, independent of that particular town. There are no sort of systematic differences between these towns, and hence the count of disease cases might adequately be modelled uh, by a Poisson distribution. Something we can ask about a Poisson distribution is by looking at its PMF, and saying, well, OK, let's imagine that the circumstance of when we're looking at disease cases, so Y is modelled by a Poisson distribution with a mean of five disease cases occurring within a given year. How can we work out in this circumstance the probability 
that the number of disease cases in a given town is equal to zero within a particular year. Given that the mean number, so lambda measures the sort of rate here, it turns out, so lambda measures the mean number of disease cases is actually five. Well, we can work out this really easily just by using our formula up here. This is just equal to five to the power zero times e to the power minus five divided through by, in this case, it's just going to be zero factorial. And we note that five to the power zero is just one because any number to the power zero is one and zero factorial is also one. So this is just equal to e to the power minus five, which is the same as one over e to the five. And it turns out that, as you can imagine, e is roughly three, so three to the power five is a big number. So this is actually a very, very small probability. And that makes sense because, you know, given that the mean number of disease cases in a particular year is five, it's very unlikely that within a given town, if these assumptions hold true that the events occur uniformly at random and events must be independent, it's very unlikely that we would actually get a count of zero. So that makes sense. And obviously, just to sort of calculate a probability of an arbitrary number of disease cases, all we need to do is just plug in that particular value of y into our formula up here, and that gives us the result. Another thing we can ask about our PMF is just to check that it is actually a proper probability distribution. So one of the things that we require of a proper probability distribution is that the sum of the probabilities across all the different sort of counts in this circumstance must add up to one. So what we suppose here is that if we sum across all potential values of y of lambda to the power y times e to the power minus lambda, all divided through by y factorial, we hope to get something which adds up to one. And remember here that it's just a sum because we're summing over discrete values of y. So how do we prove this? Well, firstly, we can take e to the power minus lambda outside of this summation because e to the minus lambda doesn't have any y in it. Then what we get if we look at the sort of first term, so now all we're doing is we're looking at the sort of first half of this expression, so that that's just that which I'm sort of drawing a ring around now. So now we imagine that we're sort of plugging in y equals zero. So when we got zero here, this is just one divided by one. So that's just one. For when y is equal to one, we then just get lambda to the power one over one factorial, which is just one. So then we just get plus y. Then we get plus y squared over two factorial. Plus then we've got sort of y cubed over three factorial. And we start to see that this is a sort of pattern which is going to go on forever. Then what we do is we notice that this sort of pattern within this parenthesis here is that which is exactly obtained via a Taylor series expansion of, as it turns out, e to the power lambda. Actually, technically, this is a Maclaurin series expansion of e to the power lambda. So this term inside the parenthesis here is identically equal to e to the power lambda for any value of lambda. So then what we get is we get that this is equal to the sort of total probability is equal to e to the power minus lambda times e to the power lambda. Then the two powers add, and then we just get e to the power zero, which is equal to one. And hence we've proved that the Poisson distribution, all this, if we sum over all the cases, the sum adds up to one. So that's a good thing for the sort of proving that it's a proper probability distribution. And then we note that all of the individual sort of terms are also going to be non-negative. So that's the second thing we need to guarantee, the fact that a Poisson distribution is actually a proper probability distribution. So just to summarize, the Poisson distribution is a discrete distribution which can be used to model counts of events occurring. And those events must occur at a sort of uniformly uh, random rate, either through time or through space, and the events must be independent. We've also shown how we can actually calculate probabilities of a particular account occurring. And finally, we've proved that the Poisson distribution is actually a proper probability distribution by proving that the individual probabilities are non-negative and that they sum to one. In the next video, we're going to derive the mean of a Poisson distribution. We're going to state its variance. We're also going to state the conditions under which the Poisson distribution provides an adequate approximation to the binomial distribution. And we're finally, we're going to sort of finish off by stating the conjugate prior to a Poisson distribution, which turns out to be 
assuming that lambda is a gamma distributed random variable.